Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Premier League table prediction, the final, final one. Now, the reason why we do a couple is because we want to get a feel for teams prior to the season starting, but then we all know how big of an impact the transfer market can make. I don't have to mention to you the likes of Wesley Fofana, Casemiro, Anthony, and the amount of money, you know, hundreds of millions of pounds being spent on some of these squads, especially in and around deadline day, that can make a huge, huge impact over the course of, of a season. Even a loan signing like uh, somebody like Arto Mello, right, uh, for, for, for Liverpool, that can make a huge, huge impact, which, which will change things over the course of the season. So this is my final, final, final table prediction. And obviously, I don't want to drag on too long here, so I just want to get straight into it. You'll see some differences from my last table prediction, of course. I'm trying not to be too much of a prisoner at the moment. But as you can see, we've got it here. The current table, Leicester sat down there on one point at the bottom. Arsenal at the top there, five wins, one loss. That loss uh, only coming very recently against Manchester United. 14-point goal difference there for, uh, for, for Manchester City. Wolves down there, minus 13. So, you know, again, we're not going to kind of buy into the table too much at this point James and I always kind of have this rule at 10 games in you know you're just over a quarter of the way through the season that's when you can maybe start paying a little bit more attention but anyway 20th FC Bournemouth um yeah this is a horribly ill-equipped uh football team uh to, to to play at this level um I hate to you know I hate to say it uh but that's unfortunately just the way just the way the cookie crumbles the um the acquisitions that have been made, not up to standards, uh, and it just, it's a team, like I said, it's just woefully ill-prepared for, for for this level of football. Um, you know, there are some names in there, Neto, right, you get from Barcelona, you think, oh, that's kind of nice, right? But then, realistically, if we're looking at looking at it across the board, Philip Billing, um, Senesi from Feyenoord, that was a nice pickup, Dom Solanke, David Brooks, Jefferson Lerma, again, there's some nice players, but this is a championship level football team. Um, and, you know, uh, unfortunately, letting go of Scott Parker as well, I thought was absolutely a appalling decision to, to, to be made. Um, out of the winnable potential games that he had over the start of his season, he won the winnable game that he had uh, and then lost all these games that obviously he should have lost. And he made a quite legitimate complaint about the quality of the squad. Um, owners took it personally. Um, maybe some fragile egos there at the uh, AFC Bournemouth uh, ownership. And yeah, they, um, they, they've they kicked him out. We'll see who, who comes in. But I'm telling you right now, uh, this team probably dead last for me. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, 19th, Southampton Football Club. Again, this is obviously a team I'm rooting for. This is kind of my, my local team, my closest team, um, my closest team to me. Again, similar in many ways to Bournemouth. This is a team that is not operating uh, appropriately for the level of football that they're trying to trying to play at. Keeping James Ward-Prowse was huge. Obviously, you've got upside in the likes of Atino Livramento, Carl Walker-Peters, Shea Adams, etc. But realistically, the guys that have been brought in, not up to scratch at all. Um, you know, names that you won't have heard of. Um, there was this uh, Romeo Leva, uh, Lavia guy, um, who was brought in from, uh, from uh, Manchester City. 11.0 seven million pounds obviously there were rumors circulating late that Chelsea were trying to sign him for like 50 million pounds I don't know how much to believe of that that seems to be a little wide of the mark in my opinion but yeah it's a football team that's not ready uh, and not appropriate for football at this level I give James Ward-Prowse a lot of credit for staying I'm sure that that wasn't kind of his his only option um but yeah, Hassan, who will, you know, this football team will be burnt out. Um, managers that demand as much of, of you as somebody like a rough, rough Hassan, who after a while it starts to get a little annoying, a little frustrating. We see it with the likes of like an Antonio Conte, right? You can only stomach having a manager of that nature for such a for such a period of time before it becomes, you know, before it turns uh, turns a little sour. Um, yeah, it's a football team preparing for the drop. Uh, I mean, the main thing that makes me makes me feel that way. If you look at kind of across the board, the average age of the uh, the average age of the squad as well is twenty four point nine, um, and you know that's being bumped up a crazy amount by the likes of a Willy Caballero there at forty, Theo Walcott, Alex McCarthy thirty three, thirty two. But you know, look at all these teenagers, twenty year olds, um, you know, and then you're getting into your twenty threes, twenty fours, etc. So yeah, Southampton ready for the drop. Um, it's not what I want. Same with. Bournemouth, you know, these are South Coast teams. These are local teams for me. I want South Coast football to, to do well and to be better because it's close to me. Um, but realistically, I just, I, 
I don't see it for Southampton. Um, I think there were there were more positive things that they could have, you know, attacked the transfer market a little bit better, especially potentially with free agents. I don't think my lighting's too bad, but I'm going to just turn my light on here, which I forgot. There we go. Nice. Um, moving on to the final position in terms of the drop, 18th position is Nottingham Forest. Now, you guys might be thinking, well, ha hang on a minute. This team has spent loads of money. You know, Jack, surely this is right up your street. You know, all this, all this money being spent. Um, Guys, no, <laughs> not not to this level. Um, I think you need to you need to sign what's right for you, what's right for your team, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But again, you know, looking at the amount of names here is crazy, absolutely crazy. I like Dean Henderson on loan. Um, I like Wayne Hennessy as kind of a backup. I like Jesse Lingard as a free. I like Kuyate as a free. I think those are really really nice signings. Renan Lodi, I think, is nice on loan as as fullback. Again, it's just getting to a point where you look at some of the players and you go, right, what's what's their role going to be? Are you bringing this guy in for like 10, 15 million just to be a squad player? Or are they going to start? You know, um, this really is kind of like football manager run amok. Uh, the video game football manager kind of run amok here. Morgan Gibbs White, I didn't like the potential fee that that was, was going to go to as well. I don't see that much from him either. Um, again, if it clicks... We'll call it, you know, some sort of masterclass, right? We'll, we'll say, oh, it was brilliant. The recruitment played a huge part because it kind of had to. You know, the 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 squad registration size, I believe, is still like, you know, twenty five. Um, so, you know, some names have left as well. But yeah, I just, I don't know. It it really freaks me out and it really worries me. Um, a team that then gets promoted, there's a real unity, there's a real kind of togetherness in, in a squad of that nature with the manager there, you build relationships and what you've done, you've just binned off all those players that have gotten you to where you want to be. Not all of them, um, but most of them. Replaced them with <laughs> England, Jamaica, Nigeria, Wales, Nigeria, Belgium, Congo, France, uh, Senegal, uh, Switzerland, Brazil, Italy, South Korea, I, uh, Ivory Coast, nearly called that island, um, Costa Rica. You know, I just blend of people don't know each other. Um, it just is a huge, seems to be a huge, huge risk uh, for, for me. So we'll we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. I'm I'm you know waiting to be proven wrong. I did think that Nottingham Forest at home that was going to be a really tough place to go and play, but at the moment the way it's looking, I just I just don't know. It I've dwelled on this way too long. It's it's a team that kind of has thrown a lot of you know what at the wall, and I don't know what we're necessarily going to get back. Um, moving on to 17th position, narrowly avoiding the drop is going to be. Everton, uh, Frank Lampard's uh, Everton. Um, I don't necessarily think Frank Lampard's a great manager. Um, I really don't. I, th I think that, you know, his his better spell was at Chelsea where he didn't really have that transfer market time to, to do it. And then Tuchel kind of came in and, and took kind of the foundation of what Frank had built at that squad and, and led them on to, to their Champions League run and Champions League success. Um, guys, I don't, I'm just looking at some of my notes here. Um, uh, yeah, I think... Either Frank Lampard will make them avoid relegation um, or somebody else will. Uh, it's going to be as simple as that. There's there's way too much talent, proven talent. And I'm not just saying that because I think this team is just so great. Idrissa Gay coming back, um, you know, Salomon Rondon. Uh, uh, let me just let me just sort by market value here so we know where, where the true talent is lying. Calvert-Lewin, obviously his injury sucks. Connor Cody, Decore, Tarkowski, uh, Damari Gray, Michael Keane, Pickford, Yeri Mina, Godfrey, Anthony Gordon, we've seen kind of explode in terms of his his reputation. Um, it will be, I'm not super high on him in midfield, but again, we'll, we'll leave that for now. Tom Davies, again, this is a team that should not be going down. If you look at the squad quality for this team and compare it to Forest, Southampton and Bournemouth, they're, they're worlds apart, worlds apart. Vitaly Mikalenko, I'm just seeing at the bottom there. Dwight McNeil has upside. Alan, um, Idris Gay, da, da, da. James Garner supposedly w w was looked at by a, by a handful of football teams as well. So this is a talented football squad. I just don't know what they are. Um, I really like the Connor Cody, James Tarkowski partnership. I know James kind of laughs at me there because it's this kind of like British centre back partnership, and maybe I'm maybe I'm romanticising it a little bit. But this is two Premier League captains, like long term Premier League captains. Um, so in my book, you know, 
even if it's just a bit of personality in the dressing room, a little bit of authority, um, you know, a little bit of a little bit of a kind of, you know, guys, we're professionals. This is how we should operate. This is how we should behave. I think that's a really, really nice pickup for that centre back partnership. But my main thing is, I don't know what Everton are anymore. Um, you know, I, I again, not to reminisce and be too romantic about it, but the days of like Fellaini, um, Leon Osman, Stephen Pienaar, right? Tim Cahill, like these, these Phil Jagielka, um, Sylvan Distan, right? Seamus Coleman, Leighton Baines, you know, there was, there was a real kind of understanding and knowledge of what Everton were, were going to be under David Moyes and, and a little, a little prior to that as well. So with this new Everton team, I just don't know what they are. I really don't know what they are. Um, it's too talented of a squad um, to go down. And like I said to you, I think with all these, with all these owners, if they think they're in danger of going down, they know that chances are they're going to get a little rub of, of improved performances under a new manager. Um, and I don't think Frank Lampard is just this irreplaceable, unbelievably valuable manager at this point. I think he's a good, okay to good manager, um, but I'm not going to just go and be like, oh, you can't get rid of Frank Lampard. No, no, get rid of Frank Lampard. If Sean, somebody like Sean Dyche is available, bring Sean Dyche in. You're not going, this Everton squad is not going down under somebody like um, somebody like Sean Dyche or even somebody like Scott Parker, you'd imagine as well. So again, Everton just avoiding avoiding the drop. I, I don't know what they are and I don't have any any faith in them going forward. I think that Connor Cody, James Tarkowski base, Pickford, Coleman, um, and then who who are they who are they sticking at um at left back uh, these days? Mikalenko, of course. You know, that's a really solid base to to work from. There are talented midfielders in there, there are dangerous forwards on their day there as well. So yeah, dwelled a little too long on Everton there again. But yeah, Everton in 17th for me. Um Fulham I've got in 16th now I feel kind of bad I feel kind of bad with this because I wanted to put Fulham uh, higher maybe because of my own bias I do I do really like Fulham this would probably be my go-to England team uh, English team to support um, if I was doing it in the uh, in the Premier League um but look I like the acquisitions um Palinia has been great Mitrovic has been great um Daniel James was was a weird one um Solomon uh, Harry Wilson um yeah, sorry, the additions of Palinia, Daniel James. I know, obviously, Mitrovic has been there a long time, but it's nice to see him prove it at a Premier, at Premier League level. He said Diop is nice and has some good upside as well. Bernd Leno is experienced. I know maybe not the top talent. Carlos Vinicius, uh, obviously, he spent some time at Spurs as well. Andreas Pereira has come in and looked, looked talented and free. Tom Kearney, one of the more underrated players for, for me in, in kind of the history of, of, of maybe even the Championship and, and the Premier League. Really talented, really talented guy. William again, I think that's nice off the bench, maybe if you're winning a game as well. Um, at Fulham, just looking at my notes here, yeah, Mitrovic, proving people proving people wrong, I like that. And Marco Silva, the main thing, he's, he's showing that if he can be put in the right position and kind of get what he wants and have the style of play that he wants to play, he can, he can really do something. We've already seen that early on for Fulham. Um, I just want to see where they are in the table. They're 10th at the moment. Again, I think that's really, really nice, really, really good. But if you look at the teams underneath them, I think there's a lot of teams there we'd go, wow, when they get their you-know-what together, they're going to just start kind of bumping their way up. And unfortunately, that will be at the expense of somebody like a Fulham. So 16th for me, I think if you're Fulham prior to the start of the season, you said, hey, you've got you finished in 16th. What are your thoughts? They'd rip your arm off. So I don't think that's a diss by, by any means. And there's a nice basis, you know, a really nice basis to work from here. Yeah, so no hard feelings there. Fulham, Fulham in uh, in sixteenth, um, fifteenth. Man, this was a really upsetting positioning uh, that, that, that that I've had here. Um, I'm going to just make sure I try and get his pronunciation right. Sasa Kalijic, um, his ACL injury is brutal really brutal and I feel I feel so bad because you did just get this sense based on looking at this squad. You did just get this sense, man. They're a goal scorer away. They're a goal scorer away from becoming something, being really good, like they were back when, um, you know, back when, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking. I say Raul Jimenez was was fit and fighting and, and, and ready to go. Because again, you know, look at some of this talent and, and some of the ages too. Gonzalo Guedes, again, I think he's largely quite overrated. Um, but again, talented player nonetheless. Ruben Neves, we know how great he is, still only 25. Um, Matias Nunez, not seen him play a great deal, but supposedly lots of people were looking for him and spending £40.5 million pounds on him was is a huge one. Pedro Neto, still only 22, linked with all the top teams. And then this is the killer. 
16.2 million, pretty modest fee. But, you know, I think, I believe this was a guy that Ralph Rangnick said, yeah, this is this is who Manchester United should be signing. So I think a lot of people get kind of excited. Austrian, Serbian, big, athletic, uh, centre forward, right? This is going to be our guy. ACL injury, probably, probably going to miss the whole season, um, which is which is brutal. I know ACL surgeries and doctors are, are so fantastic at dealing with, with these types of surgeries at the moment because they're they're basically the main thing at the moment that's going to really stop an athlete from 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 progressing. So they've gotten very, very good at handling it, but it doesn't stop the recovery time. You can't speed up the recovery time on a cruciate ligament um, um, injury. So again, Really gutted for really gutted for that's why I do have them down here in, in 15th. Diego Costa's supposedly coming in. Now, Diego Costa's coming in. I I believe his initial work permit was rejected um, because he's just not played enough football, especially at an international level. He's just not played enough football. But then I believe it's, it goes to a panel and it, they do it on a case-by-case basis. And I'm sure that his previous history of work working which is based you know that's what it is he's doing his job of working in this country has been good he's been effective da, 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 da. i would imagine that will get will get accepted and i think there'll be a hell of a lot of pressure um applied by uh, the wolverhampton wanderers hierarchy to make sure that he's in the squad that's a bit of a wild card diego costa because like i said you know you look wingers defensive midfielders holding midfielders other wingers right there's Domitore is still there. You know, there's talent across the board here. You just need that guy to finish it off. Diego Costa could very well be that guy. He may not have to work and do all this, you know, crazy stuff to just get 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 a look in for this squad. It may just be that he just needs to put the ball in the net, like maybe a hot whistling from somebody like on Erling Holland at the moment. Um, so yeah, Wolves, I'm gutted about the um Sasa Kalajic uh injury. That's really that really it's brutal. That really sucks. But again, if Diego Costa can come in, I still see enough upside there. Um, Bruno Lage, I think, has proven himself to be a good manager. I don't know what else to say. And again, with the recruitment that they've made, I expect them to be dangerous. I've got them at 15th. I think they can finish higher, whether they will, uh, up for debate, I, I would say. Um, moving on to 14th, Leicester City. Man, this is depressing. This is super, super depressing. Um, and I feel I feel kind of bad. I just I feel bad for the fan base, if I'm honest with you. Um, you know, Wolfram Didi's amazing. Yuri Tielemans is amazing. James Madison's amazing. I think Harvey Barnes has talent. Castagna, Bubakare, uh, Samari is a nice player. James Justin's a nice player. Um, Patson Daka, I think, does have upside if he can just, you know, let it loose. I think he scored at the, did well at the weekend. Um Lack of acquisitions was was the real was the real problem uh, here, uh, and also losing Wesley Fofana so late just meant that they didn't have anybody else to go on. You know, average age of the squad twenty seven point two. That's a little on 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 the high end. You got Vut Face from Ren. <laughs> 15.3 million, no idea about him, but knowing, you know, knowing Leicester City's history with, with centre-backs, that'll probably be a good one, you'd imagine. Um, you know, again, guys out on loan coming back, maybe they think they can be, they can be, you know, they can be good, but losing Kasper Schmeichel cannot go underestimated, it can't. Um, and Wesley Fofana, I mean, that's a lot of money and they've done well to get as much money as they can. You know, you look at the the, the price, they've, the amount they've made from Wesley Fofana and, and um, uh, Harry Maguire combined. I mean, holy, you know, holy smokes! Like that's you know, 150 million plus. Um, so credit where credit's due, but where's the reinvestment? Maybe it happens in January. Maybe it is. Maybe the hierarchy goes, yeah, look, uh, they bid for him late. We accepted it late. We didn't have time to do it. Like it is what it is. Just deal with it. However, you can see the results starting to affect somebody like Brendan Rodgers and him being like, well, now I'm being made to look like a fool because you've taken, I would argue, one of the better, if not the best personality in, out of my squad and Kasper Schmeichel, gone, right? Servant, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, yeah, he's 35 and maybe it's time, but still not ideal. Even having just there as a backup or, or whatever. And then you leave, lose arguably the most talented player in, in Wesley Fofana. Definitely the most valuable, I, th I think you would argue, uh, player in, in Wesley Fofana. And yeah, there you are. You sat in you sat in 20th position. You've drawn one game, scored eight, conceded, you know, conceded 16. You got, and you got a point um, uh, to, to, to your name. Um, I'm going on a long time here on Leicester because I just think it's, such, it's so disappointing. Um, 
I mentioned this before, Yuri Tielemans is in the last year of his deal. I mean, you could have easily had a, a, a bidding war for, for, a, for maybe a Spurs. Maybe a Manchester City could be tempted. Liverpool would have certainly been tempted. I think any of the top six would have been tempted to some sort of a bidding war on Yuri Tielemans um, uh, at, at this point. And then you just bring somebody else in or you you promote one of your subs. If if the kind of goal of your season is to not challenge for European football and just remain in the league, I think you could easily, you could easily accrue some money and then try and think of another project start either starting in January or starting at the end of the season. Um, so again, not smart on my part. Maybe Yuri Tielemans will sign a new deal. Who knows? I don't know. I would, if I were him, if I was his agent, I'd be advising him against that. I would, I would take the many suitors that he will no doubt have across the elite of, of European football. Um, but yeah, Rogers, you know, his comments were incredibly similar to Scott Parker's. And it'll be very interesting to see now if if the Scott Parker precedent has now been set with, hey, you can't talk about how we're we're refusing to operate. We're gonna let you go. Um, or whether they're going to go, okay, like fair, po- fair play, he's entitled to his opinion, we disagree, and then they'll allow him to continue. Because if Rogers isn't going to get it done and this continues, they'll bring in somebody who can get it done and will continue and has more upside uh, upside going forward. Um, but yeah, man, dis- depressing for Leicester City. I don't know any Leicester City fans, I don't have any friends who are Leicester City fans, but man, really, de- really depressing summer. It really makes you think, what, you know, what the hell were they thinking? It was kind of just a very passive, just... Oh, we'll sit back and let it happen. And then it happened. And it's like, well, now you're worse off. I don't know what you... Anyway, 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 anyway. Um, Leicester City in 14th. 13th, Leeds United. Um, first off, hands up, both of them. I was wrong about Jesse Marsh thus far, right? I'm not, I'm still holding a little bit of hope that I was, I'm going to say I was right and that he won't be kind of a major success in this country with, with regards to his, um, his football management, but so far so good. Um, I mean, you know, Leeds are in ninth, you know, again, it's just square across the board, right? Total middle ground, one, two, drawn two, lost two, scored 10, conceded 10, um, you know, every game's a one, one, every game's a two, two, that, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, look, I, I I like some of the players that they've brought in. Um, I'm you know not going to hold my breath on uh, Brendan Aronson um, from uh, is that Salzburg? Yeah, from Salzburg. Um, you know, uh, Sinistera obviously has talent. That's a dangerous, dangerous player. Ilan Melier, I think, is one of the better young goalkeepers in world football. Diego Llorente's talent. Jack Harrison's still there. Tyler Adams obviously brought in from from Leipzig as well. They, you know, that's where Jesse Marsh. Those are the kind of players and the organisations that he knows. Patrick Bamford got old very quickly. My goodness, he's twenty nine already. Um, yeah, like you know, look, you can see you can see the Red Bull logo littered across this. Jesse Marsh is definitely you know all over this. Rodrigo thirty one again. It's 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 a middle of the road, middling talent football team, right? Um, it, it, it's been a slow build. That's what I like. I'm like Nottingham Forest. Obviously, I think you know there's a lot there's a lot of players at Nottingham Forest where it's just like there you go. Now we have a good squad, and it's like yeah, well, relationships don't really work that way. These these have been kind of natural slow burner relationships to 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 build the talent across this squad. Um, Jesse Marsh, I think, is is going to be good. Um, so far, so good. Um, but I don't think there's going to be the development and the and the, and the betterment going forward long term that, that they're going to want. So there'll be a crossroads here at some point because you know, again, their record it actually really sums it up nicely. You know, one two, drawn two, lost two, scored ten, lost. Two, you know, again, being middle of the road is great, but you want to be there. Want to be signs of improvement. There needs to be a plan of, of of some description. I'm not personally seeing that just yet, and I don't know if Jesse Marsh will be that guy. But again, I was wrong from the get go. I thought that they would they would not fall off a cliff, but I thought that they would you know fall off after Marcelo Bielsa, and that's not been the case at all. They've they've arguably improved actually. Um, so yeah. Leeds for me, 13th. Uh, nice start to the season, promising start to the season, but I, I don't know how much that will that will continue. Um, moving on to 12th, I've got Aston Villa. Um, Villa are such a weird one, such a weird one. Um, you know, this is a really, guys, this is a really talented football score. I mean, again, you know, I'm a big fan of transfer market. I think they do a nice job. You know, 468.54... You know, total market value for, for the guys in the squad. I mean, that is a nice, that's a nice kind of fee. Um, sorry, a nice uh, sum there, you know. Um, Douglas Luis nearly left on, on deadline day to go to Arsenal. Ollie Watkins has talent. John McGinn, Buendia, Tyron Mings, Emmy Martinez. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, Den Donker, um, again, Den Donker is a, like a nice player. I'm surprised Wolves let him go. I guess he just wasn't in keeping with what Bruno Large wanted. Luca Dina, Leon Bailey, Bubakar Kamara, um, Matty Cash, Ramsey. You know, again, Philippe Coutinho is lower down this list. Danny Ings. You know, again, this is this is a talented football squad that should be doing much, much better. You know, th- this is the kind of level of squad that really should be, you know, poking um you know sticking a hot poker in the in the butts of the of the of the top six for for a europa league spot definitely a conference league spot um but they're not they're not at the moment uh gerard obviously had this fantastic run at at rangers which i know you know is kind of holding him holding him quite high at the moment um there they are in 17th again it's six games gone uh, I'm not going to not going to go too mad dwelling on the current on the current table, but my thing with Aston Villa and and this is going to be a theme throughout this video. There are there are so many good squads that you would go, you you could you are capable of doing this. The owner's going to look at that and go, well, we've spent the money on these squads, and that's what we want. We want a return on investment on this. If it's not going to be Steven Gerrard, it's going to be someone else. It's going to be someone else, and they will get a bump from improving and being better. So, again, either Gerard's going to turn it around, and I think that they'll sneak up to yeah, like twelfth, anywhere from tenth to fourteenth in and around there. But you know, again, this is really this should be a squad with the right management, the right blah blah blah. This should be a squad that's pushing for eighth, seventh, sixth. Right? It should be, but it's not. Um, and it's either going to be Gerard or or or, or it's not. Um, moving on. Up the list here, Brentford I have in 11th. Now, first off, I was just talking about the 400 and whatever it was, million for, for Aston Villa squad, 255.24, right? Okay, it's not it's not half, but it's pretty close. Um, this is the difference between a manager that, you know, has a squad that's that's kind of bought in. Thomas Frank and I think Graham Potter is the other one that, that really stands out to me. These are guys that... This is kind of the big difference that, that you would argue between between them and somebody like Lampard, Gerrard, etc. Ivan Tony's brilliant, David Rea and Bueno, blah, blah blah. But they all buy in to what their to what their their manager is asking them to. All these players, right? And they make the, you know they make the home matches difficult. Again, looking at this squad and comparing it to Villa's, I know which one I'm taking. If I'm down the park, you know, me and James are captains, right? And we're picking teams. I'm, okay, Ivan Tony's maybe way up there, but apart from that, I'm basically just taking Villa players because there's more talent there, you know, better, more experienced, all this kind of stuff. But as a squad, as a unit in the environment that Thomas Frank has created at Brentford, these guys are killing it at the moment and and, and outperforming massively where they should be. They're currently eighth. Um, you know, they're a draw better off than than, than Leeds were um, who, who were to lose that game. Goal difference is great, though. You know, uh, six more goals than than they've conceded. So I like what Brentford are. My issue here is with a lot of these squads, and we're going to get onto one uh, over here coming up in a second. But with all these squads, it's all about mentality. Because, again, I'm not trying to diss these guys, but we're comparing them at the top, top level. We're comparing them at the top, top level. These are professional footballers. They should not have kind of fragile egos at this point, okay? If these guys lose confidence, they don't have just the talent to just be able to just get out of it. They need a system. They need a work ethic, a group dynamic. They need that confidence and that strength, strong mentality to be able to achieve the way that they're the way that they're achieving. I look at this, you know, Brentford team. Is it too dissimilar to somebody like a Southampton? I'd say probably not. But obviously, what you have is the that's where the value of Thomas Frank comes in and what he's been able to create there. Right, I don't know if Southampton have an Ivan Tony, but James Ward Prowse is a good player. Can we not compare the talents and, and kind of abilities, overall attributes and abilities, Ivan Tony and James Ward Prowse? I'm just saying, it, there's there's a good comparison to be had for a team like Brentford, and for a team like Southampton, um, and then just to show you what the manager and the culture has created around this team here. Because to me, the moment that confidence goes and that mentality side of the go. The, game goes and starts to dip down that's when we can see a tumble and that's when a team like this they could be relegation candidates like that if it weren't for somebody like Thomas Frank and I think what he's been able to to, to bring to this team they've made that Brentford Community Stadium 
um, you know, a real place to, to go and play and create some really special moments there. And again, it all just lends into, it, it, it goes back to the argument and the conversation before about at the top, top level, you know, talent is is only like 30 or 40 percent. I don't know what the figures are, but 30 or 40 percent of what you can do, that that mental side of the game plays such a big, big part. Um, you know, again, that comparison with the Villa squad, I, I, I do stand by. I mean, there's, you know, night and day, uh, Brentford and Villa. But again, you've got one manager and one uh, one setup as a football club that is that's outperforming the other setup. You know, if you're not getting the best out of your talent, you're doing something wrong. Um, anyway, Brentford in 11th. And again, they are reaching there. And I give them a lot of credit. And I want to see them, you know, I want to see them continue. I used to live around there. That's, you know, that's a great, that's a great football team that I want to see d- do well and and, and succeed. Um, getting up into the top half now, again, I'm trying to trying to rattle along here. But um, as you guys well know, I love to just talk and talk and talk. Um, Crystal Palace. Uh, Patrick Vieira, Crystal Palace, Wilfred Zaha, right? Um, it's always going to be a talking point. The games are always going to be fun. They're always going to be kind of intense. Um, you know, as you saw there, the kind of market value of, of, of the squad in terms of the talent. Yeah, it's it's closer to it's closer to Brentford's even than than Villa. But I think you look at a lot of these guys here and you just think, no, no, they're a that's a top level player. Wilfred Zaha is a game changer. Again, I think his failed move to Manchester United was a shame, and I wonder if that's 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 either put off um, other top teams from from signing him, um, or it's Palace just rejecting bids, which is I think largely what we've seen. Um, but Mark Gahey, Joachim Anderson, obviously we saw him against Darwin Nunez. Tarek Mitchell's been great. Eze's been fantastic. Again, not as influential as maybe he wants to be, but he, I believe, will be one of these players that kind of goes under the radar but keeps things ticking over. Michael Elise. Um, Edward, Sheikh Ducore from, uh, was that Mets? Lens. Um, you know, again, it's a nice squad. It's a talented squad, but they're, they're punching. They're outperforming what they really should be. And again, it's credit where it's credit to Patrick Vieira. Um, there was so much turnover in this squad last season. And again, I think they're starting to try and build something here. And guys, and again, the reason why I've got them here, I get their 15th. I get they've won one game, right? I understand that. But they've had a really tough start. You look at the teams that they've already played. I think coming up is Manchester United as well. It's like Arsenal, um, Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester. You know, they're, they're all just coming at them, right? Wait till this Crystal Palace team get a nice home game against a middling team like a, you know, a Villa or an Everton or, or a Forest, Leicester, whatever. Um, and, you know, we know that's going to be a more competitive, much more winnable game. If they can keep close and keep battling with these great teams that, that, that they're playing against, and showing their talent the moment they play a lesser team they'll get the rewards for for, for their hard work so yeah tough start um Vieira seems to be great good acquisitions and there are difference makers on the pitch so so yeah Crystal Palace uh for me I've got them in 10th and and again Palace fans I think you would say hey got you finished in 10th I think they'd take that at this point I really do um, moving up to ninth is West Ham United. Now, it's not been a good start for West Ham at all. There they are in 18th, won a game, drawn a game, lost four games. Um, again, you see the kind of improvement in terms of the 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 uh, the value of the squad, right? Let's have a look who we've got knocking around in here. We can speak about Declan Rice. Um, obviously, he has huge talent. The guy I want to talk about, though, is oh my god, where is he? I was gonna say a little lower down than I thought he'd be. Gianluca Scamacca. Gianluca Scamacca will be the main difference maker for this West Ham team when he gets playing consistently, when he gets starting consistently. That's going to be the game changer. We cannot enter 2023. I know it's the middle of the season, but we cannot enter 2023 with where is he? He's probably way down here. Poor old 32 year old, you know, Mikel Antonio to a certain extent, playing out of position still. I would still argue that. It's, you know, square peg, round hole. He's just so talented and determined and such a good professional that he made it work a, 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 as a forward. But we can't have Mikel Antonio going and leading the line for this West Ham team who will have European aspirations. Not Champions League, maybe, but like Europa League aspirations for this West Ham team. We know for a fact Declan Rice will not be there next summer. We know for a fact there's, I guarantee there's been some sort of behind the door, you know, behind the door, you know, that they've behind closed doors is what that's what I'm looking for. There's been some sort of agreement. Hey, man, 
stay this one year, then we'll let you go to the team that offers us the most money and the team that you want to go to. Cool, great, handshake, thank you. Move on, okay? Um, what I will say, David Moyes is too good of a coach for this level of team, right? I do not think he'll ever get a shot again at, at one of the top teams after that failure at, at Manchester United. Um, but at this kind of level, which is just a punching up, right, just below that kind of top level, he's, he's way too good. The talent across the pitch is really strong. Scamacca just seen, you know, look at guys, Lucas Paqueta, that's a crazy pickup. Scamacca as well, that's a crazy pickup, right? Those are, if 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 you're Chelsea and you sign Paqueta and Scamacca, you go, wow, we've done really good business there. But guys, this is West Ham doing this. Um, so, you know, uh, elite talent across the board. Again, Moyes is going to pick these guys up. We just need a bit of consistency from um uh, Paqueta Scamaca playing in the team more consistently with that solid base of, of, of a Rice and a Suchek. You know, that 4-2-3-1, I think, is what we'll what we'll probably end up end up seeing. Um, and then with with somebody like Antonio maybe playing in a different position or coming off the bench. Um, side Ben Rama still has talent. There's, you know, again, it's a team that will get better. Um, I'm not gonna be, I'm not, I'm not gonna just say, oh, they're in 18th, maybe they'll finish 17th. Like, no. This team will get out of this, uh, and I think they'll finish ninth. Um, I, I can't even remember where I had them last time, but I'm, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was higher than this. Um, but I think that a recovery will happen here at some point for uh, for, for West Ham. Moving on to eighth, I got Brighton. Now I know I can just imagine so many of you being like, "What the?" He so hear me out. I'm owning now. This is me owning being a prisoner at the moment. I'm owning it. I'm accepting it. It's fine. Total prisoner at the moment. Let's let's go back to the table. They're fourth, right? Four wins, a draw, a loss. They scored eleven goals, conceded five. They can they scored one less goal than Spurs. You know this is they're doing fantastically well with an incredibly limited, um, you know, limited set of talented players. And again, it's not a diss. It's a credit to Graham Potter. It's a credit to the hierarchy of Brighton Hove Albion that they've created this with not very much. Again, can you do more with less? Right? Can you do more with less? And what I mean by that is, can you squeeze the liquid out of the stone or whatever, whatever the expression is? My expressions are all over the place today. But can you get everything that you can out of Trossard? Can you get everything you can out of Tarek Lamptey? Can you get everything you can out of Alexis McAllister, right? Can you get everything you can out of newly signed? Love this signing, by the way. Love this signing. Billy Gilmore, right? He's going to be fantastic. I have no doubt. Can you get everything you can out of Solly Marsh, et cetera? Pascal Gross, et cetera, et cetera, right? They can, okay? Where, where the likes of Villa are failing, where the likes of, um, you know, let's say Wolves at the moment are failing, can these can Graham Potter in the hierarchy? Yes, yes, they can, and that's the that's the biggest difference. I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, my other notes here. I'm prisoner at the moment. Graham Potter's one hell of a coach. Team, are, the team are just so bought into what they're trying to do here that everything Graham Potter's saying, they're going, "Yep, cool," and they're all in it together. You can just tell. Um, they're never going to lose horribly. They'll be competitive in in the 38 games. And guys, realistically as well. It's a reasonably small squad in terms of like starters and backups and stuff, okay? But when they're coming up against some of these other bigger teams, they're going to give them a run for their money because there's no European football too. Carabao Cup, FA Cup, sure, maybe they'll play some subs in that if they think that they can maybe sneak Europa League or Conference League, right? You know, Bright they Brighton really are one of those teams. I just, I, I'm full of praise for them at the moment. I, I understand prisoner of the moment looking at the table just after six games and thinking oh my god but, you know got brian have, brian have played a couple of teams here you know um i don't know if we can let's have a look at let's have a look at the results just because i want to be reminded um so yeah here you go right so they played what are we six games in one two three four five six so they beat Manchester United, drew with Newcastle United, beat West Ham, beat Leeds. Okay, they lost to lost to Fulham, beat Leicester again, beat West Ham, beat Manchester United, draw against Newcastle, beat in Leeds. You know, again, it's it's solid. And and when these other big teams come to come to town, it's not going to be easy for them at all. Um, scored five goals in there against Leicester. 
I want to say. Yeah, five. You know, again, I I can't I can't speak highly enough of of new of of Brighton. Um, oh, there we go. Bit of foreshadowing. Uh, Freudian slip there. Up in seventh, I've got Newcastle. Now again, similar to Brighton, you might be scrolling down a little bit and seeing them in eleventh. One one game, drawn four. You know, that's as much as 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 Everton. You know, tied for the highest amount of draws. Goal difference is positive. They're all, they're all still up uh, plus one. Um. I do just want to look at their do just want to look at their transfers real quick um, because I think this is this is something that needs to be needs to be commented on. Um, Eddie Howe and this group will continue to get better and better. I have no doubt about that. Um, you signed two 22 year olds who, if you're a top six football team, you wouldn't be mad at signing. You know, if if I told you uh, who could have done with Chelsea is a great example. If Chelsea fans, I told you, hey, you're losing Rudiger, you're losing, oh my God, who else? They look Christensen. Um, but I tell you what, you're going to get Sven Botman and you're going to get, uh, and uh, up, uh, Lukaku's going to go, but you're going to get Alexander Isak. Um, Sven Botman's going to be about 30, 35 million pounds, and, and Isak's going to be about 63, 65. They're going to go, oh, great, thanks. So to be operating that way as Newcastle United is absolutely brilliant. Bruno Gimaraes is still there, right? Um, Again, I, I just think that, again, one of Jack's little catchphrase is the relationship between money and football is undeniable. It's undeniable. And eventually, by hook or by crook, it works itself out. This Newcastle team will continue to get better, will continue to get better, to con- you know, continue to get better. We've already started seeing the comments from Eddie Howe about the siege mentality, kind of like a Jose Mourinho, you know, type thing, uh, us against the world kind of thing. Oh, all these clubs are trying to make us pay more money. Yeah, because you have the money to do it for, mate. Ask any top six football fan, especially Manchester United, Chelsea early on as well, when when Roman Abramovich was first in throwing money around. Oh, we spent a lot on, we spent more than we should have on here you kind of have to because they know you can do it. You don't have the leverage to, 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 to turn it down. You just don't, you know, again, what is it? So the owners of Manchester city have like 60 billion or, or 16 billion or so, some like ludicrous amount guys, the, um, uh, private investment fund PIF, right. The Saudis for, for, for Newcastle guys, it's like 600 and, 20 billion pounds or dollars right there's a huge difference between pounds and dollars and that but i'm just saying it's like it's like 10 times the amount of the man city owners this new cost team is just going to do this it's just going to do this you can throw any honestly throw any manager in there bring in any player who is of any repute and eventually at some point we'll be looking at a top six challenging top four challenging football team Again, they're going about it smartly, which is going to expedite the process. But I'm just saying, you throw enough money at something, in football, most of the time it works, eventually. We know about Bruno Guimaraes, right? We know about how you know much he was wanted by, by teams, contract till 2026. Alisson Maximan is you know, one of the most exciting wingers in, in the league. 25, contract till 2026. Isak, contract till 2028. That's massive. That's absolutely massive, right? Sven Botman, 2027. Joe Willock, Jolinton, obviously he'll be on his way out here shortly. Callum Wilson, again, he'll probably be on his way out here shortly. And they'll just start slowly, slowly improving. Amaron, it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. But Eddie Howe, Eddie Howe has the squad in place, has the quality in place. And again, a lot of these games that are draws, they're going to be in every single game. And more often than not, because of Eddie Howe's coaching and the talent of these players, they're going to start churning out results. And we're just going to see them slowly make their way up the table. So to me, I know this is this one's my one kind of where I'm a bit like, mm, don't know how I feel about this necessarily. I've got them in 11th. I do just think they'll finish 7th. I've, I've got that feeling. You know, the likes of a Brighton will come down. I think um, Brentford will ease out a bit. Fulham, Leeds, you know, and again, and I look at the bottom part of the table here and I think who's going to really kind of match, the, you know, their improvement and their betterment. And I, I don't know who that's going to be. So Newcastle United here in 7th, getting on to the interesting stuff. Getting on to the interesting stuff. Top six. That's what everybody wants to know about. I might just timestamp this in the description as well. I got Chelsea in sixth, as you can see on the screen. Um, 
couple of reasons. Thomas Tuchel has a history of, and, you know, pretty well-documented history at this point too, of getting to a point where he's been in the job long enough that it's not like a fresh new voice, right? And then the, you know, the performances start to just kind of tail off a little bit and it just doesn't quite work out. And again, with the summer they've had, it's just very weird. I just don't, I don't know what to make of it. And that's a good point, actually. Let's have a look at their, let's have a look at their transfers. Um, so, well, let's look at where they are on the table. So they're sixth at the moment, three wins, a draw, two losses, negative goal difference, though. That's a red flag to me. Um, only, you know, only scoring eight goals, same amount as Manchester United. And obviously Manchester United have had this like, you know, really horrible, you know, really horrible start. Um, but you look compared to a Man City, um, you know, to, 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 to a Liverpool, to a Spurs, to a Brighton, even to an Arsenal, just a little, little way off. Let's have a look here. Where's he for Fana? Okay, nice. Needed, needed a centre-back. My goodness, they needed a centre-back. But then I would scroll down and show you a little bit more of a, in my view, that what would be somewhat of a worrying one, which is Kaldu Koulibaly. Chelsea have always had this idea that they don't give out big contracts or massively sign players over the age of 30 because they don't think it's a good use of, of, of funds and a good use of their investment going forward, which, okay, I, I think it's a different... I think it's a different vibe player to player. Um, but I would say Kaladu Koulibaly, with that amount of money that's been spent, like you could have spent that money on somebody with more upside who's better, who will be sticking around and playing at a higher level for longer. Um, I don't know, you know, that this basically proves there's going to be a real commitment to that kind of back three, ideally, that they're going to want to play, especially being partnered next to somebody like, um, like uh, uh, Thiago Silva. Uh, Wesley Fonner, though, I think was good, was necessary. Again, the fee sucks, but it is what it is. It's what you kind of at this level, especially if you're a Chelsea football club with new owners, that's what you have to do. Again, Mark Kukurev, fifty-eight point seven seven. My goodness, that is an appalling waste of money. Guy's not guy's not worth half that. Um, you know, I, I think I'm paying twenty to twenty to twenty-five mil for Mark Kukurev. So to pay nearly sixty million pounds for him is that is not good. Um, especially when Ben Chilwell, I believe, is, is probably the better player. So you know, Mark Kukurev is going to be a backup left back for like sixty million pounds. My goodness. Raheem Sterling was necessary. You needed a personality and an attacking player to come in and just replace something. I know it's not the same position, but replacing something that that, that was left by uh, by the you know tragedy uh, disaster that was um, that was Romelu Lukaku. Guy with some upside from Villa, fine. Aubameyang again, thirty three years old. The way it ended at Arsenal, not the way I'd have spent my money if I'm being honest. Um, again. <laughs> take that Mark Kukurea money, um, you know, take that Koulibaly money, um, add that a little more on, maybe sign Alexander Isak. That uh, would have been kind of cool. I think you could have easily come in there and, and, and battled it out with uh, battled it out with, with Newcastle and Isak would be a starter. You'd be able to offer him that starting job. Anyway, I digress. Um, but yeah, the, you know, confusing additions. Fafana makes a lot of sense. Sterling, to me, makes a lot of sense. But apart from that, some confusing additions. Um, and then the players leaving. Werner, Shame, Emerson, great. Billy Gilmore, ugh, I think they're going to regret that. I don't know if there's a buyback in there at all. Batshuayi, again, you know, guy's 28, could still have come in and, and done a job. Um, you know, this, this is where it gets tough. You know, Rudiger for free, Christensen for free, Alonso for free. Like, man, you know, brutal, brutal. Ross Barkley leaves the club, Drinkwater leaves the club, Saul, that, that didn't work either. Um, and again, just looking at the squad in general, I believe Conte's kind of burnt out. I don't know what we're going to get from Jorginho anymore. I really like uh, Mateo Kovacic. Rhys James is obviously brilliant still. Uh, Chilwell, so far, so good in terms of coming back. Edouard Mendy's great. Um, we still need to see a little more from Kai Havertz, but I think he has. He has a lot of upside and, and benefit to him. To me... I, I can't really put my finger on it. It's just off to me. The whole squad, the whole situation, it just seems a little off to me. I don't know if there's the belief, but then you know what's funny? They go down to 10 men, but then they beat the team, right? They beat Saints 2-1. Um, and, you know, there's all these matches where it's kind of like, man, they should have lost the game, but they've drawn it, or they should have lost the game, but they actually won it, right? So, again, this is one, and guys, the top... Man, the top 
uh, for, apart from first position, second through sixth, I think it's a really tricky one to call this year. So best of luck doing it. I'm just sticking my neck out here and just giving you giving you what I think will happen. I just don't see the continuity, consistency, the relationship building across the board here. Chelsea should still be and do well against a lot of these kind of middle ground, middle of the road teams. But it's the ones where I just think there'll be the odd couple of shock losses that will really catch them off guard. Um, just looking at my notes here, see if see if I've forgotten anything. Yeah, I don't know what Chelsea are. Um, too cool. Yeah, again, that second season uh, syndrome, you know, full season syndrome thing is is there to, for everyone to see. And, you know, we know, OK, maybe it was under the other ownership, but I think chances are if things start going south for, for Thomas Tuchel here, he'll be gone. Um, and then, yeah, I just think I, I just think we'll see some shock losses across the the, the course of the year here. Um, but then again, we'll see them. We'll see them beat some teams that they shouldn't really beat. So, yeah. I've got Chelsea in sixth again. Not easy. Not super confident get, uh, about it. I just, I just have that feeling it's going to be a little bit of a down year for them. Um, fifth, Arsenal. Um, I really like the start. Um, I watched All or Nothing, and I tried as hard as I could to not let that impact uh, my thoughts and the way that I'm, the way that I'm thinking about it. But unfortunately, it has a little bit. Um, they're trending in the right direction. That holding midfield is what I'm really, really concerned about. The Douglas Lewis thing seemed to seemed a bit, I don't know, just seemed a bit desperate. I don't want to use that word, but I can't think of a better word to, to really use at this point. But it just seemed a little desperate. Um, getting um trying to get Douglas Lewis at the end there. Again, I think Yuri Tielemans was just staring him in the face. I don't know why that I I do not know why that didn't happen, but I guess we'll I guess we'll have to see. Um there's positives to this squad. I don't know, you know, I don't know what else to say. And, and again, they've been they've been brave in terms of what they've done over the last eighteen months. Bukayo Saka coming in was is a perfect marriage. Uh, it, it's a player who probably feels he should have played more. Maybe felt a little bit disrespected from before, but again, has come in and shown his talent. Bukayo Saka again. I still think there's more to come from him. I like Bukayo Saka, but again, I, I'm not fully convinced and fully you know in on him yet. Um, but I do think I do think there's more to come from him. You know, guys, he's still 21. Think about what he's managed to achieve, what he's managed to do in, in his young career. You know, nuts. He can just get better and better. Keep taking, keep taking strides. Martin Udegaard, I think, is fantastic. Um, I give him a lot of credit for you know working hard enough to become captain. I think Arsenal is a perfect club for him for him to develop. You know, when when he was at Real Madrid, and you know. Uh, you know, he's this young, young kid, right? Who, who's going to be the next best thing and, and all this kind of stuff. I just think, yeah, it was never, it was never going to be the case. You never jump in at the top as a young player and just prove it. You've got to drop a little, humble yourself. And then, you know, you show the work rate to, to, to prove the professional you are. Ben White, right back, I don't love. Um, it's a lot of money spent. I still think he should be playing centre back, but nowhere near um, because of what they're trying to do with those two other guys, with with Saliba and with Gabriel. I, I think that is just. I mean, you know, I'll try and find their ages here. So Gabriel, you got there is twenty four. Saliba's twenty one. I mean, you know, guys, this could be the Arsenal partnership for the next eight to ten years. Um, you know, great. I've, you know, good for you guys. You you found it. Martinelli has a lot of upside. I like that. Smith Rowe, Partier, and again, I think they've bought into what Mikel Arteta wants. Um, it's a good amount of spending for Arsenal. It's a good amount of spending over the past couple of years. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens going forward. The worries for me that I have here, yes, it's trending in the right direction. That holding midfield, they are short in there. They needed something. And I don't, we don't know what's going to happen. I don't know the details of the Thomas Partey situation, but again, that's, it's, that's fishy to me. I don't love that. Um, couldn't can Odegaard sit a little deeper? Can Zinchenko come in there and play central midfield? Maybe this Fabio Vieira kid I've I've not seen play. It's a lot of money you know spent for him. Jack is not the answer. Sambi Lokonga will continue to develop. El Nani is not the guy. Again, squad just seems a little thin, a little short. And I just think my main big red flag, Gabriel Jesus. If no one else can help consistently with goal contributions. And they're overworking Gabriel Jesus in a World Cup year two, where he's going to want to be the guy for for, for Brazil if he can be. Um, if he gets hurt, Arsenal season is over. If he gets hurt, it's over. Um, I don't look at uh, an Eddie Nketiah coming in or a Gabriel Martinelli playing as sent forward for to, for that to be good enough for them to make top four. So I'm kind of I'm hedging my bets a little bit here. That there's just not the squad depth that they need across the board to consistently churn out the performances required to make top four with some of the other teams looking how they look and, and and improving going forward. Because again, if this is Arsenal kind of at their best and looking really good, I said this to James, 
I'm happy that Arsenal are doing well and beating teams that they should be beating. They came up against one team where it's not a you should be beating them team. It's it's away at a struggling Manchester United team, but away, and they lost three one. Do I think they can go to Stamford Bridge and get a draw? No, probably not. Do I think they can go to Anfield, uh, to the Etihad, to um, um, you know the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? Like, no, I, I I don't think that they'll be able to go there and get and get and get draws or, or let alone win. So that to me is the problem. I still need to be that to be proven to me. I don't think this set of players has that in them yet. But again, be it f- you know feasting on the poor a little bit. That's where the majority of your points come from. Go for it. Go nuts. You know, they, they, they won five games on the trot doing that. That's fantastic. Keep doing that. Um, you know, the, the the rest of the top six makes up 10 of your 10 of your 38 total games. There's 28 other games where you can where you can try and get three points across the board, and they should be. So again, Arsenal for me just missing out. But again, not super confident on this. Sticking my neck out there. Um <laughs> sticking my neck out there, but 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 we shall see. Fourth, just, just Manchester United. Um, <laughs> here we go. Everybody can clip this if they want, because I'm prepared to look like a fool in the next year, 18 months or however long it is. I'm going to stare right down the barrel. I think Eric Ten Hag is the guy. I think Eric Ten Hag is the person um, that, that, that the Manchester United board fans, whatever, have been looking for. I think this is the Sir Alex Ferguson replacement, not in terms of longevity, just in terms of a manager who can handle being Manchester United manager and, and give success. And by success, I mean, not just like Jose Mourinho won the treble, as James and I always joke about, which was, I think, what was it? Community Shield, um, Europa League and the Carabao Cup or, or something something like that, which like, you know, the most budget um, treble you, you can ever think of. Um, I'm talking about, I think, given a year or so, another couple of transfer windows, maybe start a next season. This Manchester United team should probably be challenging for the title. That's kind of the level of guy I think they've brought in here. And it seems to be that he's going to be backed that way. Um, however, this season, which is what we're talking about, no, they don't have my full faith to now just continue winning games and going on and winning the league. There's going to be speed bumps here across the road. I've got, I've got written down here as well. This is going to be a classic two steps forward, a step back, right? They've won through get four games in a row, right? They'll lose one coming up here pretty soon. I guarantee it. And then it'll be, oh, problems are still there. And then they'll win a bunch of games and then they'll lose a game they should, you know, and again, it's it's not going to be the kind of consistent dominance that we would usually expect out of a Manchester United of old. And that's going to take its time. It's going to take its time to, to get there. Um, signings look to be great. I can't deny it. I think Dubravka will put enough pressure on De Gea saying that. I would have said the same about Dean Henderson, 33-year-old goalkeeper being brought in. Don't know if I love that. Guys, Lissandra Martinez is absolutely brilliant. Um, as somebody who's like just shy of five foot ten, I'm gonna come and defend my fellow. Again, we're, we're not at a professional football level, I guess you're short, but again, for average men, I'm we're a little over average here. Okay. Give us a break. But Lissandra Martinez has been brilliant. He's arguably the best centre-back in the league this year. Guy's been amazing. Guy's been a monster. Um, he's winning aerial duels. He's making tackles, interceptions, blocks, doing doing absolutely everything. He's killing it. His relationship with Rafa Varane, um, Dalo, De Gea, um, Malassia looks to be fantastic. That's going to be the best thing going forward. Um, where else are we? Casemiro, again, <laughs> just signing a winner. is absolutely ridiculous. That you know their bench is just going to look hilarious. Christian Eriksen seems to be uh, seems to be a great um, seems to be a great fit. Um, Anthony, again, jury's still out in my opinion. Guy's got a lot of talent, and uh, and you know to spend that kind of money, Eric Ten Hag really must believe in him. So I think he must have the mentality or something of that nature to to be sorted. And guys, Eric Ten Hag now has his starting eleven. That's kind of in the books here. Um, they're going to keep getting better. They don't have my full trust. Um, and again, the signings seem to be good. Squad depth, you name it, right? <laughs> be fascinating to see what happens with this man. Um, Mason Greenwood, again, uh, lips kept uh, tight on him. This man coming off the bench is the biggest game changer the world has ever seen. Martial may struggle to get in this team as well with Rashford playing like he did. They're going to have to battle it out. There's wingers, young players, players, you know, again... I. It, it seems to be a well-balanced, deep squad, 31 players. And, you know, across the board, I mean, you know, there's a couple of kids who I guess you'd be like, well, who the hell are they? But 
apart from that, you can make a couple of 11s out of this that are strong. So they're going to be fighting across the board. That's where, for me, where somebody like Chelsea might be let down or somebody like Arsenal might be let down is, is that strength and depth, depth aspect of it as well. Maybe another team coming up here as well. That's where Manchester United have it. And it's going to be a busy season, guys, a really busy season. Yeah, just sneaking forth, just... And the guys, again, Chelsea fourth, fine. <laughs> okay. Arsenal fourth, fine. Okay. Man United sixth, okay. Like, do you know what I mean? It, these three teams is really kind of interchangeable. And I would argue even the next two guys coming up could be could be thrown into the mix here as well. So Manchester United in at fourth. Third, I've got Spurs. I can keep this one quick because, uh, again, I know a lot of people uh, in here uh, are well aware of Spurs' uh, situation. Um, so I don't want to. I don't want to dwell on stuff that these guys already know. Um, it's the Antonio Conte factor. Uh, that's my. That's my biggest thing. Antonio Conte doesn't give a damn about what Spurs are going to look like in 2024, 2025, 2026. They really don't care. They're not going to sign some 19-year-old with some nice upside who maybe well, maybe he can fill in at fullback in a couple of years. No, he doesn't care. He's going to sign Ivan Perisic, who he knows really well and can play a handful of games and be a game changer, difference maker, big in the dressing room, go on and so forth, right? So this is why I like this is why I like Antonio Conte because he's a win now guy. No matter what, what situation you're in, he's trying to win every game that he plays. He's trying to become a the best version of himself and the team that they can possibly be on a week-to-week, game-to-game basis. Kane, Son, Rashalison, Dan Kulisevsky, who I think you guys know that I absolutely love. Hoybier is one of my favorite players. Kuti Romero is obviously a, a battler in there. East Basuma is a nice little, nice little signing for, from them. And again, guys, Brighton's business, getting Billy Gilmore for like 10 mil and then managing to sell somebody like East Basuma for like 27 mil. I know maybe he could have gone more for that, people argue. But again, you, you've made like you made like 15, 20 mil and you've arguably got a better holding midfielder now. Just saying. Um, Eric Dyer, not much talk about how bad he's been playing. So again, something must be going right. Um, Benton Kuo, I think, is fantastic. Uh, you know, and again, this the other thing with this team, there's kind of a bench starting to appear here, right? You've got the centre-backs to cover if, if required. You've got the wide positions to be covered if required as well. You've got attacking positions to be covered as well if required. Richarlison, I think, super important from that standpoint. And again, to me... Um, dogged defensively, the front three on its day is the best in the best in the world. Me and James have done a video on that. Um, again, we're comparing them to the likes of a Paris Saint Germain um, and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's Antonio Conte. This is Antonio Conte's world uh, at Tottenham Hotspur, and that's what will what will continue to give them um, the 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 upside and the benefit that that they need to go forward. But again. Can I see Spurs being brought down into the dirty bathwater of, of making top four or not? Yeah, absolutely I can. I'm betting against it because of the talent and the manager and that, that combination. You know, again, guys, this is a team that's ready to win. They're, they're hungry for winning now. It's not about being bottled, bottled jobs. They're, they're, they're past that now. They're past that in terms of the mindset of being a bottled job. It's, it's we need to do whatever we can or whatever we need to do to win football games. And, and that marries well with what Antonio Conte wants. Whether they'll do it or not, is another another thing entirely, um, but but I think it's there for them to at least make top four and, and be dangerous in cup competitions and you know Champions League etc. Second Liverpool uh, again, you know uh, especially for the rest of this list, I'm sure you know what's going to happen here. Yeah, guys, look, <laughs> this is an aging football team. Um, I'm going to kind of dwell on some points that I've already made in previous uh, previous videos here. Um, most Salah should have been sold. I don't know what to tell you. Mo Salah should have been sold with with what with what Liverpool are going to be trying to do now with with the addition of a Darwin Nunez, that Luis Diaz coming in with a slightly different style of play as well. Um, we're not going to see the same Salah that we've we, that we've seen before because we can't we can't anymore. The 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 landscape has changed for him for to allow him to do what he wants to do. It's a lot of money to be paid um, for, for for a guy which to me you could have cashed in on and, and signed somebody with more of an upside. You've got to roll with the times. You can't just pay somebody on on nostalgia or what they've done in the past, right? It's one of the problems, and this is one of the issues with with the business side of football. You don't pay people for what they've done. You pay people for what they're going to do. That's kind of the cutthroat of it. Now, if you want to be perceived by football players that are coming to, you know, the, the, your your employees that, oh, no, they respect me, they like me, and go, go, yeah, fine, that's a kind of a PR game that you have to that you have to play and, and, you know, a nicety diplomatic game that you have to play. But you want to sign players on what they're going to be because you have faith in what they're going to be and, and going to bring in. 
you don't want to be paying people who aren't going to be able to give you what they can going forward. Now, I know it sounds like I'm really bagging on Mo Salah. It's not Mo Salah's fault. Mo Salah's been fantastic for his entire Liverpool career, gone above and beyond anything that I thought he would ever be able to, to achieve coming from coming from Roma. Again, I think a lot of that credit goes to the system around it, Jurgen Klopp, blah, blah, blah. But to me, the choice between Sadio Mane and Mo Salah, you sell Mo Salah, you get more money from Mo Salah. I don't know who would necessarily have bought him, but I'm sure somebody would have come in and, and, and spent, spent the money to, to, to sign him. Then you can bring in another, another person to come in. I think Liverpool would be in a better spot if they still had Sadio Mane playing for their football team. Um, and then, you know, they they were able to use that Sadio Mane money to sign a right winger to, to come in and, 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 and do that. Um, I've mentioned this before. It's it's kind of an ageing squad. And, and I mean that from a standpoint of at the top, right? Um, Milner's 36... Uh, Henderson's 32, Thiago's 31, Matip, Van Dijk, Firmino, Salah, you know. And again, this isn't the whole 11, but you think historically about Liverpool and you actually go, wow, you know, Thiago, Henderson, Milner, Van Dijk, Firmino, Salah, like, oof, like we're, we're slowly kind of coming to the end here. The younger guys coming in, I like Fabio Carvalho, especially for the fee. Why not? Harvey Elliott's come in and been brilliant thus far. Ibrahim Konate, I do think he will take the mantle and be that starting centre-back. We know Trent's still long, young, Luis Diaz, etc. But there is going to be this kind of changing of the guard a little bit here um, going forward with, with Liverpool. Um, I'm talking quite ne- negatively about Liverpool, while I was quite relatively positive on Spurs, Man United and Arsenal. Um, I think Jurgen Klopp's too good and the players have been there and done it and have that have those relationships in place to 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 be able to continue and just and just uh, grind out what they need to grind out to get second. Liverpool are in danger though. I mean, you know, hey, let's let's look at the Premier League table. 7th, 1 2 drawn 3, lost 1. Um you know, 6 points off Arsenal, um 5 points off Man City. I think that's the one that, that will stand out a little more. Um, Spurs too. You know, I just, you know, Man United are ahead of them. Chelsea are ahead of them. I just, I don't know. Um, there's something about them this year where I just don't think it's, it's going to be a time of change. And I can see that I can see now all the Klopp excuses, which everyone's going to make, everyone's going to make fun of. It's a tough year. It's a World Cup year. I like the Artemelo uh, loan signing. I think when he gets some game time under his belt and, and learns uh, learns the way that Klopp wants to play and can develop a, a relationship with, uh, with with somebody maybe like Firmino, uh, Fabinho, excuse me, um, and and you know if Thiago can come back, we'll see we'll see what happens. I'm just a little down on them. And James and I talked about this to you know blue in the face that the, the gap now is so much bigger between. Liverpool Man City um, that, than it was last year. I mean, even even if you start early on in the transfer window, one team signs Erling Holland and one team signs Darwin Nunez, who's had one good year in 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 a kind of you know in the Portuguese league, which produces good talent. But a hundred million euros for Darwin Nunez, really? That's not what I'd have done. I'd have taken that money and bought Alexander Isak, right? You know, I. Uh, I don't know. Dusan Blavich was probably available in and around the time that they were looking for looking to sign a new striker. You know, um, I just think it will be a drop off from Liverpool this year. And again, as every year and every month goes by, these big personalities, big players in the contemporary history of Liverpool Football Club are going to just slowly start to fade away. Milner, Henderson, Van Dijk, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Van Dijk's not been good this year at all. Uh, I know James really, really rates Van Dyke. Uh, you know, in, in kind of the history and the pantheon of great centre backs. I don't. I never have thought he's been that good. He's been, he's been one of the better centre backs in the world. You know, a top five centre back in the in the world for for a good few years. But again, this is not like an all time Premier League great makes the Premier League eleven type type centre back. And I think, you know, this year at thirty one especially as a centre-back, you should still be doing serious work, putting serious work in, especially with his stature and build. And it's, we've not seen that so far. Uh, I wonder if that will con- continue to fall off again. Salah, expect a little bit of a, of a comeback on that. And again, guys, we're looking at the contracts here too. Milner out of contract, end of this year. Adrian, Henderson's got a couple of years. Thiago, a couple of years. Matip, a couple of years. Van Dijk, a couple of years. Firmino, end of this year. Um, 
Salah had the, uh, had the extension. Alisson will still be great. Ox, you know, again, there's a team in, in serious need of, of, of change. And, and to me, you need to generate those funds and, and Salah would have been the main one um, that, that I would have personally cashed in on instead of Sadio Mane. Again, ran over. I just kind of spoke there. I'm going to go back to my notes here. Um, yeah, aging team. Salah's just been, Salah should have been sold, not Mane. Nunez, yeah, the jury's, jury's still out. I don't know what they have there yet. They need to adapt to this new style of play to, to accommodate for, for Darwin Nunez. And yeah, I still back Klopp to motivate this team that they might finish 10, 15 points off, off City, maybe more, who knows. Um, but I, I still think second for them. Um, and yeah, guys, I'll keep this short and sweet. Man City, this is the best team in the world, I would argue. Uh, best team in the league. And again, I'm going to defend my best team in the... Uh, best team in the world comment again um yeah in a final sure they could lose to Real Madrid sure they could lose to Bayern whatever Liverpool even um but what I mean is that if you got this team to play every other team 100 times they'd win more times than not win if that makes sense uh I mean here's your guy Jesus Christ um yeah I think Holland's a freak show the only thing that's stopping him is him um, if he gets hurt, if he gets injured, I think that's you know that's problematic. But again, I expect Julian Alvarez to come in and just be just be a game changer. Um, but again, you know, you look at the talent across across the board for this for the squad. Sergio Gomez, I think, has got serious upside in that left back spot. We we might look at that uh, that Sergio Gomez instead of Zinchenko as, as one of the most incredible upgrades we've ever seen. Um, couple of couple of question marks. I'm not going to lie across the board. Um, you know, again, like we touched on a little bit with uh like we touched on a little bit with Liverpool some guys slowly but surely coming to the end here slowly but surely like with Liverpool Carl Walker Gundogan Kevin De Bruyne Mares right there's some changes that, that's going to be need need to be made there going forward but again you look at this core of, of 28 and under I mean <laughs> Benjamin Mendy we'll see what happens with him um uh, Laporte Cancelo Stones, Bernardo Silva, Ake, Kanji's just come in, Grealish, Calvin Phillips, Rodri, Ruben Diaz, Sergio Gomez, Phil Foden, Erling Haaland, Alvarez. I mean, man, they're all set going forward. This, this, and you know, with Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola has been brilliant. Obviously, I have my own concerns and issues with him going forward as a as a manager. Um, in terms of being re- remembered as one of the all time greats. Uh, Every kind of league that he's gone in, every league that he's been a part of, he's had the best team, the best squad, or the most money to spend. And then after he's then spent that, he's then had success. Now that's fine. Um, I like to, I like it when people do things uh, which are uh, finishing above expectations. The expectation at Bayern would be Champions Leagues and would be winning the league every year. Barcelona, Champions Leagues, win the leagues every year. And yeah, fine, he did that. Barcelona is amazing. So I'd really the best club side of all time. What he's doing at Man City is amazing, but I'd like to see him go to a a Roma, right? Maybe I'm just willing this into existence, but go to a Milan. Um, you know, go go to one of these, one of these slightly lower level teams, go to a Dortmund, right? You know, and 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 see what he can see what he can do. Uh that that's my only criticism. But apart from that, at the top, top level, uh, I don't know if there's a better manager in the world. Um if you know I I, I spoke before about um the ability as managers to achieve more with less. Graham Potters of the world, Patrick Vieira's of the world, uh, Thomas Franks of the world, doing more with less. Amazing. It's all you could want. If you're in ownership, you don't have that much to spend. However, Graham Potter, Thomas Frank, Patrick Vieira cannot do what Pep Guardiola can do with this team. This is where you get into the conversation of doing more with more. And what I mean by that is, if you gave those managers that I mentioned, who I think are fantastic, these players, we wouldn't see them do the stuff that Pep Guardiola has them doing. That's that's the biggest difference across the board. And that's where I give Pep a lot of credit. Um, at the top, top level, he will get more out of players than any other manager, um, any other manager in the world in terms of footballing, tactics, technical side of the game, you know, intelligence, everything. That, that's what he's that's what he's the best at. And in terms of the Man City ownership and what they've been able to, to, to create there, they've got the best man for the job. Why on earth would he leave? Why on earth would he leave? He can do absolutely anything and everything that he wants to do at his heart's content. Now, you may have somebody like me go, oh, well, I want to see you go to uh, Valencia and win La Liga or win the Champions League. Okay, fine. But he doesn't care about me. 
<laughs> cares about cares about winning titles and winning Champions Leagues. He's not gonna when he's looking at all of his medals and all of his trophies and his the, these photos of these great moments he's had. He's not gonna be thinking, oh, maybe I need to prove myself to Jack to Jack Farr. No, definitely not. Um, so again. This Man City team, unstoppable, went off on a bit of a rant there. But yeah, it's the best team in the league. Haaland's a monster. And guys, I have my concerns about Haaland maybe getting injured. But guys, he's not really putting himself into positions where he can get injured. Unless he's overdoing it at uh, training. Um, I think that realistically, this is, you know, this is all that this is all that he's going to need to do. And he'll get 20 plus, 25 plus, 30 plus goal. Who knows at this point? Who knows? I set the goal over under at um I set the goal over under for him at um, 19 and a half in the, in the preseason. I, t- I think I took the over just, I think I had him scoring like maybe 20 goals. The guy's already on 10. It's already halfway there. Six games in. <laughs> so, so, you know, the guys are, guys are freak. Guys are freak. I don't know what else to say. Um, right. Guys have been droning on there a little bit. Um, no, so I'll leave. I'll leave with Erling Haaland and his uh, and his goal records stood there. How about that, um, guys? Thank you very much for watching. A uh, little bit of a long one. I mean, I'm I'm trying to give a little bit of a breakdown and a little bit of couple of points on each of the teams as to why I have them finishing where I have them. Um, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your table prediction. Stick it down there. Again, I love receiving the criticism, but I want to know yours as well because I need to come for you too. Can't just have you know somebody destroy my picks without seeing your picks as well so drop a like on the video if you like what you've seen please hit that subscribe button as well um mean a great deal to a great deal to me and james on the road to a thousand trying to get uh so that we've starting to have letters after numbers instead of just numbers after numbers on the on the subscription tab we want to hit that 1k um yeah any disagreements let me have it chelsea fans i'm sure you think i have your guys way too low arsenal fans i don't have you making top four is that going to be potentially problematic as well um but yeah apart from that like share and subscribe do all that good stuff let me know in the comments and uh i'll see you next time